Welcome to Tamayus Junior School. At Tamayus Junior School, our professional teaching staff concentrates on your child and monitors results. Our spacious compound gives your child room to play and be innovative. With a well-furnished library, your child gets first-hand information from well-censored secular and religious books. We care about technology, and that's why your child has full access to computer lessons and online learning. Hygiene and the well-being of your child is priority, and that's why we put much emphasis on how they feed and sleep. Registration is in progress from primary one to primary four. Find us in Chira, Chitichifumba, Mulawa, Wakiso District, or contact us on both calls and WhatsApp 0757 802 211. Trust us with your kids. We are ready to serve you. Alhamdulillah, Hiladi Hadana Ali Hada wa Makuna Ali Nahtadi Alaula and Hadana Allah. وصلوات ربي وسلامه على من جاءنا بشيرا ونذيرا وداعيا إلى الله بإذنه وسراجا منيرا أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله الله تعالى بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره المشركون عباد الله يقول رب العزة والجلال ثم أورثنا الكتاب الذين اصطفيناهم من عبادنا فمنهم ظالم لنفسه ومنهم مقتصد ومنهم سابق بالخيرات بإذن الله ذلك هو الفضل الكبير إخوة الكرام تذكرنا هذه الآية الكريمة بأن الناس أمام ربهم متفاوتون فمنهم مسلم ومنهم كافر والمسلمون أيضا ليسوا على درجة واحدة فمنهم ظالم لنفسه ومنهم مقتصد ومنهم سارع بالخيرات بإذن الله I praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I pray that his peace and blessings be bestowed upon the last messenger Muhammad Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Brothers and sisters in Islam The Quranic verse Which I have opened with this sermon It is found in Surah Fatir Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informs us That thumma awrathna alkitab alladhina astafaynahum min ibadina Then we made our book to be inherited by people whom we chose. So we need to look into ourselves to find out whether we are among the chosen people by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But even after choosing them, Allah says, فَمِنْهُمْ ظَالِمٌ لِنَفْسِهِ Among those people whom we have chosen, they have three major categories. They are those who wronged themselves. They are those who commit injustice against themselves. And they are those who are moderate. And among those whom we have chosen, they are those who hasten towards doing what is good by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thalika huwa al-fadlul kabir. Indeed, that is a very great bounty from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibad Allah, all the servants of Allah, an-nasu laysu ala darajatin wahida. 
We need all of us to appreciate the fact and the reality that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided that we cannot be at the same level. We can't be at the same level of belief. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala confirmed and said, فَمِنْهُمْ مُؤْمِنْ هُوَ الَّذِي خَلَقَكُمْ فَمِنْكُمْ كَاثِرٌ وَمِنْكُمْ مُؤْمِنْ It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's arrangement that amongst us, there are those who disbelieve in the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمِنْهُمْ مُؤْمِنْ There are those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made, has given the guidance. And here we are, the followers of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَلَكِنْ شَاءَ الْمَوْلَىٰ عَزَّ وَجَلْ But also at the same time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided that Ummah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam لَيْسَتْ عَلَىٰ دَرَجَةٍ وَاحِدًا Even amongst ourselves, we are not at the same level. This is the explanation that we get from this Quranic verse. Abdullah bin Abbas radiyallahu anhu says, إِنَّهُ أُمَّةُ مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ That the people who are addressed in this verse, this is the community, this is the society of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم ورثهم كل كتاب أنزله Allah سبحانه وتعالى has made them to inherit, to succeed all the books that Allah سبحانه وتعالى revealed from the heaven. But after succeeding or inheriting these books, فظالمهم يغفر له the one who shall commit injustice against himself, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the capacity to forgive him. وَمُخْتَصِدُهُمْ And the one who is moderate, يُحَاسِبُهُ اللَّهُ حِسَابًا يَسِيرًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shall bring him to accountability, but he shall account him in a very simple way. Then he says, وَسَابِقُهُمْ And the one who hasten towards doing what is good, يَدْخُلُ الْجَنَّةَ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shall grant him, shall admit him to Jannah without any accountability. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he makes us among the last category. But as he says in Islam, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, another scholar of Quran, he is also bringing some statements which are similar to those of Abdullah ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhumah. He says, هَذِهِ الْأُمَّةِ This community of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ثَلَاثَةُ أَثْلَاثَةً Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shall categorize it into three categories يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ on the last day. ثُلُثٌ يَدْخُلُونَ الْجَنَّةَ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابٍ A third of the community of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allah shall grant them that opportunity to be admitted to Jannah without any accountability. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala include us among the first category. But the second category says, وَثُلُثٌ And then the second third, يُحَاسَبُونَ حِسَابًا يَسِيرًا Allah shall account them. Allah shall have to look into their files. But insha'Allah, it shall be a simple accountability. And after that, Allah will admit them into Jannah. Then the third, وَثُلُثٌ Then another third, يَجِئُونَ بِذُنُوبٍ عِظَامٍ Abdullah bin Mas'ud says, the another third, or another third, shall come when they have committed a lot of wrongs. They will come with grave sins. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has terminated their appointment on this world without repenting from these sins. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will turn to them and he says, مَنْ هَاُولَاءِ وَهُوَ أَعْلَمُ بِهِ Allah will turn to them and ask, who are those even though Allah himself knows them? Then, فَيَقُولُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ The angels will answer, will respond to Allah's question by saying that إِنَّهُمْ قَوْمٌ Those who are the people, لَهُمْ ذُنُوبٌ عِظَامٌ They committed grave sins. وَلَكِنَّهُمْ لَمْ يُشِرِكُوا بِكَ شَيْئًا But when they were on this world, they never associated anything with you in worship. They never committed any kind of shirk. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, 
Udkhulu haulai fi si'ati rahmati. Please admit those, those who are into Jannah because of my mercy. Brothers and sisters in Islam, the whole month of Ramadan has just ended. And when you look at the way how we have observed the month of Ramadan, you could see that we are categorized into three. There are those li anfusihim. They are those who committed wrong, who committed injustice against themselves. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu kutiba alaykum usuyam. O you who believe, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed fasting upon you. Wallahi, they never complied with this fast. They didn't fast. My brother, those of you who missed Ramadan, ma gharraka bi rabbikal kareem. What is that that made you to distance from the call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? My brother, who missed the holy month of Ramadan, without any justification, what are you going to tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The one who created you. There is no doubt that if you didn't fast the holy month of Ramadan, you are among those who committed injustice against themselves. But because the door of Tawbah is open, it is not too late. As long as you still have life, Tub ila Rabbik, you are supposed to repent before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa taqdhi ma fatak, so that you can pay those days that you missed in the holy month of Ramadan. So that you can pay the holy month of Ramadan which you didn't fast. If you don't do that, fa'anta zalimun li nafsik, you are among those who committed wrong against themselves. Amma sunifu thani, the second category, alladhina swamu Ramadan, those who are the those who are who fast the holy month of Ramadan, but they didn't do any other sunnah activity during Ramadan. They only fasted the holy month of Ramadan and that soul. Ma qamu Ramadan. They didn't stand during the taraweh. Ma tahajjadu fi Ramadan. They didn't stand for tahajjud. They were not giving swadaka. They were not reciting Quran. They only adhered to the ruling. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu kutiba alaykum usuyam. They only fasted and they said, for us we have fulfilled the commandment and the obligation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ha'ulai humul muqtasidun. Those are the moderate. Our loved scholars tell us that the moderate are the ones who only fulfill the commandments. They don't do anything beyond the commandments. They don't go for the option activities. Those are the people who are moderate. I insha'Allah, inna Allah yudkhiluhumul jannah ba'da hisabin yaseer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shall admit them in jannah after putting them onto accountability. Then the third category during the holy month of Ramadan. Those are the ones who fasted the holy month of Ramadan. And they even stood so that they can be in the category of those whom Allah, the Prophet said, Man qama Ramadan. Anyone who stands during night, who stands for taraweh, who stands for tahajjud during Ramadan, imanan wa ihtisaban, ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhambi. Haulai humus sabiquna bil khayrat. Those ones are the ones who hasten towards fulfilling the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Asabikuna bil khayrat. Those who hasten towards fulfilling the commandments of Allah. Alladheena swamu Ramadan wa atba'uhu bi umratin fi Ramadan. Alhamdulillah, amongst ourselves, there are those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given enough money. And during the holy month of Ramadan, they didn't only fast, but they even went for Umrah during the holy month of Ramadan. Fabushra aliha ula. Hani aliha ula. I wish to congratulate those people. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Umratan fi Ramadan ta'adil hijjah the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he gave the good tidings, the glad tidings for those who made, for those who made Umrah during Ramadan. He said, Al-Umrah fi Ramadan ta'adil hajjah. Any person who goes to Mecca and he makes Umrah during the holy month of Ramadan, that Umrah is counted as if he has made hajj. And you all know the rewards of hajj. When the Prophet said, Man hajja, 
Any person who makes hajj, walam yarfuth, walam yafsuk, raja ila qawmihi kayawmi waladatuhu ummuhu. Any person who makes hajj, and he does it in a satisfactory manner, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accepted it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes him to go back to his people, free of any evil, free of any commitment of any sin, as if he has just been born yesterday. Brothers and sisters in Islam, those are the ones who always hasten towards fulfilling the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, in this holy month of, in the previous holy month of Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave me an opportunity to go and make umrah. But wallahi ladhi la ilaha ghayru, what I witnessed there, I could see that People we are so much they, they were so much busy praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during all sorts of ibadah. I could see some Ugandan ladies who were staying from a distance which seemed to be far, but they were not missing any prayer except at haram. And you know the many rewards that the Prophet has promised to those who perform salah during in haram. So those ones, at Sabiquna Bil Khayrat. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the lifetime that is still granted to us to be among the sabiquna bil khayrat. As sabiquna bil khayrat, those who hasten towards fulfilling the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, humulladhina swamu ramadhan thumma atba'uhu bisitti min shawwal. Those are the ones who fulfilled the fasting of the holy month of Ramadan. Not only that, they also accompanied it with fasting six days because the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Man swama Ramadan." Any person who who observes the fasting of the holy Ramadan, thumma atba'ahu bisitti min shawwal, then he accompanies Ramadan with fasting only six days. Allah gives him the rewards as if he has observed the entire year of fasting. Brothers and sisters in Islam, look at that kind of category. Shawwal is just a few days away. I understand amongst us, there are those people who give them, themselves some kind of complacence. You think that what you have done is enough, but you still have some days of shawwal which you can commit yourself so that you fast them, so that you can be among as-sabiquna bil khayrat, those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have put, those ones who hasten towards fulfilling the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters in Islam, when you look at that categorization, it should teach us that that is the decision of Allah. But at the same time, we should learn to promote ourselves from one level to another level. If we were among those who were disregarding the commandments of Allah, Allah told you to pray and you are not praying. Allah told you to fast the holy month of Ramadan, you are not doing that. Allah told you not to approach zina and you are doing it. Allah told you not to approach theft and you are doing it. It is high time to promote yourself. You still have the time. Tadaruj, so that you can move from one category to another category. I understand among us ourselves, Hunaka Minanas, Alladina Yaktafuna Bil I know amongst ourselves those ones who only observe the obligations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ha humul Those are the moderate. I know that during the time of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one Sahaba came and asked him about how he can fulfill his religion. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam narrated to him the five pillars of Islam. The Sahaba asked him, if I fulfill this and I don't add anything and I don't subtract anything, will Allah admit me to Jannah? The Prophet said, yes. The man said, afala ubashiran nas. Shouldn't I go and tell my people the same? The Prophet said, La, don't tell them, Fayatakilu, because they are not going to strive. So I know that when you are the, among those who are fulfilling the obligations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are among the moderate. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept your deeds. But at the same time, don't you want to be among as sabiqun bil khayrat? Don't you want to be among those whom Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala will admit to Jannah without any kind of accountability? 
We know any person who shall be subjected to accountability, that one alone is an embarrassment. That one alone is a form of punishment. That is why we must graduate from one category to another category. Brothers and sisters in Islam, لَقَدْ وَرَدَ فِي الْقُرْآنِ الْكَرِيمِ In the Holy Quran, there are several commandments. حَيْثُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى كَانَ يُثْنِ الْأَنْبِيَاءِ The Prophet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, was praising his beloved prophets. In the verses, Allah said, إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا يُسَارِعُونَ فِي الْخَيْرَاتِ The companions, sorry, the, 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 the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they used to go so fast towards fulfilling the commandments. But you know their category. The, the, the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah has forgiven them. But even with that, إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا يُسَارِعُونَ فِي الْخَيْرَاتِ They were so much, they were, they were always hastening towards fulfilling the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were not only doing their obligations, but they were also following them with a lot of optional acts and optional activities. You know that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was a role model. When Aisha radiallahu anha looked at the way how the Prophet was worshipping, she wondered and she asked, didn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive you all what came before and all what will come after? What did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam reply? He said, Ala turidu an akuna abdan shakura. Don't you want to, meet, to be among the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who are grateful? The companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know them, you know their category. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he was talking about the companions, he said, Khairun nasu qarni, the best generation is my generation. And that's the generation of the companions. Fahada Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, radiyallahu anhu, wa hadha Umar bin al-Khattab, radiyallahu anhu, yusari'una fil khayrat. You all know, what is the position of Abu Bakr? What is the position of Umar? But they were not relaxing at all. They were doing all what they can so that they can be closer towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is a story. During the time of Abu Bakr, Hadha Abu Bakr, Alladhi Bushira Bil Jannah. Brothers and sisters in Islam, we are talking about Abu Bakr who was given the glad tidings of being admitted in Jannah in his lifetime. We are talking about Abu Bakr, a Siddiq, the one who is truthful. The one who was confirmed by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We are talking about Abu Bakr whose activities, whose conduct was narrated in the Holy Quran. But Abu Bakr was always competing with Umar radiallahu anhu. It is narrated that Abu Bakr, despite being a companion of the Prophet, despite being the Amirul Mu'mineen, he used to go and serve a very old lady, very old. And from time and again, he could run early morning, during lunchtime, in the evening, to check on that old lady. Because the lady was a widow. She was in her advanced stage. So Abu Bakr, as the lead of the believers, he had put it on himself so that he can serve that lady. Not only serving her, he could go there, clean her, clean her change her clothes, do all sorts of good things so that he can leave her in the best way. There was no any relationship between him and that old lady. Umar, radiallahu anhu, he used to see Abu Bakr going to that place, but he doesn't know what is exactly, what is that uh, that Abu Bakr is doing exactly. After the death of Abu Bakr, Umar, radiallahu anhu, wanted to step into the shoes of Abu Bakr. To do that good deed, when he went there, he could see Abu Bakr carrying dates. Whenever he reached the lady, he could feed the lady. The first day that Umar bin al-Khattab went to this lady and he fed her with this date, this woman wondered and asked, where is your friend? First of all, this lady was blind. So she couldn't recognize the faces. She asked Umar, where is your friend? It was a question to show that 
You are not the one who has been coming to me. Then Omar said, how did you know that I'm not the one? The lady said, you are feeding me this kind of debt with the seed inside. Meaning that Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu, look at the level of Ihsan. Before feeding this lady with this debt, he could make sure that this seed, it is taken out of it. And that is how the lady recognized that this is not the person who has been taking care of me. Innahum kanu yusabiquna fil khayrat. Those are the people who we are hastening towards fulfilling the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah ni wa akumul sa'il al-mu'minin. Donate today to support the Masjid Kapit Appeal as we continue to change the stories of many mosques. Send your donation on 0708-22-2330 or 0788-02-0301. Inna alhamdulillah, laka alhamdu ya Rabb, كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له شهادة تنجي قائلها من عذاب يوم أليم بذا سيساز إن إسلام as I wind up the khutbah I want to pick only two things then we come to the conclusion of our khutbah number one the significance of tawhid the importance of monotheism the importance of not associating Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with anything in worship. As long as you are a believer, as long as you are a Muslim, but you are not associating Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with anything in worship, bi'ithnillah kad yukfarulak. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can admit you. So take that one as so important. At the same time, it doesn't matter how much good deeds you do. As long as you commit one act of shirk, you don't have anything before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Please take that one with a serious note. Number two, I understand that as we are here on this dunya, there is a lot of things that give us a lot of laxity. And we forget our major purpose of creation. That is why I want to end this khutbah by connecting you towards what is next. What is next? We are about to approach the Hijjah season. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had said, وَلِلَّهِ عَلَى النَّاسِ حِجُّ الْبَيْتِ مَنْ اسْتَفَاعَ إِلَيْهِ سَبِيلًا The nature, the category, the behavior, the conduct of a Muslim is that once you move from one season, immediately you connect and switch to another season. The season of Ramadan is ending, or it has ended. We are now in the season of Shawwal. It is also ending. Very soon, we should be connecting towards the performance of Hajj, those ones whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given ability. But I know that in our lifetime, there are very many things which divert us from this kind of vision. That is why one scholar said, Ya man bi dunya hu shtagal, wa qarrahu thulu al-amal, wa qad mada fi ghaflatin hatta dana minhu al-ajal, al-mautu yaghti baghtatan wal-qabru sunduqu al-amal. Alayka bima tufiduka fi al-ma'adi, wa ma tanju bihi yawma al-tanadi, fa ma lak, laysa yanfa'u fika wa'adhun wa la zajrun, fa ka annaka min jamadi, atarla, أن تكون رفيق قوم لهم زاد وأنت بغير زاد فمن زرع الحبوب وما سقاها تأوه نادما يوم الحصاد. This is what I want to end my khutbah with. يا من بدنياه اشتغل. Oh you who has been diverted, has been taken over by the good things in this world. You have been taken over by the worldly pleasures. وغره ثول الأمل. And you are so reluctant because you think that your health is so good. You know, sometimes you go to the hospital and a complete scan, a complete checkup is made on you. And you give yourself comfort that, alhamdulillah, there is nothing that I have. There is no any ailment. And therefore, you relax. 
وقد مضى في غفلة حتى دنا منه الأجل. You spend most of your time in that kind of leisure, in that kind of laxity, حتى دنا منه الأجل. Until when death approaches you. الموت يأتي بغتة والقبر صندوق العمل. Death is going to approach you abruptly. And when we take you to the grave, القبر صندوق العمل. That is a place only for the good deeds. That is why the advice is alayka bima tufiduka fil ma'adi please spare some time so that you can do something that is going to benefit you after wa ma tanju bihi yawma tanadi do something that is going to save you tomorrow famalak why is it that la yanfa'u fika wa'dhun wa la zajrun fa ka'annaka min jamadi why is it that anything that is told you told to you it doesn't change you as if you are static as if you are non living thing atarwa an takuna rafiqa qaumin would you like to be a companion of a group of people lahum zadun they have made for themselves enough preparation wa anta bi ghairi zadin but miskin for you don't have any preparation faman zara al hububa wa ma saqaha any person who puts the seed who sows the seed and then he does not irrigate it ta'awwaha nadiman yawm al hasadi at the end of the day shall be among those ones who are going to regret but as is in islam it is not too late that you can change it is not too late that you can graduate from one category to another category and once you do that bi'ithnillah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shall accept your deeds and shall admit you to the jannah ala wa sallu wa sallimu على البشير النذير فانه جل شانه امركم بذلك حيث قال ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما وقال صلى الله عليه وسلم من صلى علي صلاه واحده صلى الله عليه بها عشر اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم وبارك اللهم على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد Is she right? Yes. Abi, that's for Amina.